Okay, in this lecture, we're going to be looking at something called the scalar triple product. So what we're dealing with here is taking three vectors and combining them in a certain way in order to yield a single one scalar quantity. So three vectors into one scalar, scalar triple product. Suppose we have A, we dot it with B, which itself is crossed with C. That is the scalar triple product, that combination. Now here I've put brackets to emphasize to do the cross product first, but we can just write A dot B cross C without the brackets. Why? Because we have to do it in the correct order. If we try to do A dot B first and then cross that with C, it's a nonsense because that will be a scalar cross producted with a vector. It doesn't make sense. All right then, so let's do one. We'll make up some vectors. Let's have a is equal to 3, 1, minus 1, and b is equal to 2, 0, 4, and c is equal to minus 1, minus 2, 3. Okay, there are our vectors, and let's go ahead and work it out. So first we'll need to do the cross product b cross c. So let's write that out. So I'm bringing these down now. Remember, you can work out the cross product by whatever your favorite method is. I'm just going to do it in the method I introduced before, which is we ignore the uh, first elements and we do the falling diagonal here, 0, and subtract the rising diagonal, minus 8. That gives us the first element of 8. Then we ignore the middle elements and we do the rising diagonal, gives us minus 4. Subtract the falling diagonal, uh, which is 6. So that's going to give us a minus 10 entry. And then we ignore the uh, third elements and we do the falling diagonal gives us a minus 4 and subtract 0. So that's going to be minus 4. That is our candidate for our cross product, but it's always good to test. How do we test a cross product? We try dotting it with either of the uh, input vectors and check we get 0. So here we'll get 8 twos are 16 and 4 minus 4 is minus 16. Add it up, that is 0. And now we try the other combination. Uh, here we're going to have. Uh, minus 1 on 8, minus 8, and then uh, plus 20, and then minus 12. That does indeed add up to 0. It's past our checks. Those were just checks, but it was good to do them. And so we're now very uh, happy that that is the correct cross product. To finish the scalar triple product, we now just need to dot that with A. So let's write it out again, uh, minus 10, minus 4, and do the dot product. Uh, that's 24 minus 10. Uh, plus 4 is going to be 18. That's the answer. That's our scalar triple product. It could have been a positive number, a negative number, could have been 0. In this case it's 18. Now let's do uh, another one, so I'll erase this, but uh, we'll simply use the same, uh, the same three vectors but we'll do them in a different order as our second example. So let's do B dotted with C cross A so, of course, we have to start by doing that C cross A combination first. So let me write that down quickly. Minus 1, minus 2, 3, crossed with uh, 3, 1, minus 1. So we start with the falling diagonal, that's going to be 2, and then we subtract 3, that's minus 1. And then we have a rising diagonal, that's going to be 9, and subtract 1, that's 8. And then we have a falling diagonal, minus 1, and subtract minus 6, so that's going to be uh, 5 in all. Okay, did I get that cross product correct or not? Do the dot product test. Uh, minus 3, there's a dot product test. Minus 3, 8, minus 5, that one's passed. Let's try this dot product combination as a second check. Double check. 1 minus 16 plus 15. That's also going to come out at 0. So it's passed both of my checks. That one is 0 as well. We're happy that this is indeed the cross product C cross A. We now need to complete it. So what we're doing is um, B, uh, which was 2, 0, 4, uh, dotted with what we found, our cross product, minus uh, 1, 8, 5. So we get ahead, go ahead and value this, minus 2, 0, and 20, 18 again. All right. So our second example has also given us 18. Does this ma mean that it doesn't matter in which order we do the elements of the uh, scalar triple product? 
let me just write down the answer to that and then we'll look at it. It turns out that for any vectors a, b, and c, then a dot b cross c is equal to b dot c cross a. These were the two cases we looked at. And it's also equal, in fact, to c dot um, a cross b. This will always be true. In this case, it was equal to 18. But these three things will always be equal. There are three other combinations we could write down in principle. There are three other ways to combine a, b, and c. We could have a dot c cross b, or we could have b dot a cross c, or we could have c dot b cross a. Now it turns out that those things are, are easy to see what they will be because let's just look at the difference from the ones above. I've just swapped the order of the cross product and we know that when we oops we know that when we swap the order of a cross product we introduce a minus sign so if the top uh, three cases were equal to 18 the bottom three cases must be equal to each other and equal to minus 18 and in general uh, this is the same rule for all uh, uh, scalar triple products your three of them are equal and three of them uh, are equal to one another but equal to the minus of the first three so to speak and and how can you tell which ones are equal it's helpful to write out this little cycle a b and c written in a circle like this if we are going around in a clockwise direction here b dot c cross a but that's clockwise around our wheel then um, and here's another one that's clockwise c dot a cross b those guys all belong together so the guys that are in the clockwise direction all belong together and the anti-clockwise guys they belong uh, together and they're the minus of one another these two groups all right so um, that's uh, that's I think all we need to do as practice for uh, doing the scalar triple product and uh, knowing what we ought to get let's think about something else I'm going to introduce you to something called the parallelepiped uh, that's the way I say it. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Parallelepiped. Anyway, this guy is a three-dimensional shape. But first, I'm going to remind you of what a parallelogram looks like. So here's a rectangle, and here's a parallelogram that we get um, if we have uh, the pairs of the sides are parallel to each other, but they are not at right angle, at right angles around the vertex. Now consider this rectangular box, and Let's tidy it up. There we are. And consider what happens if we uh, build it out of edges that are in groups of parallel edges but are not all at right angles to each other. So uh, let's see if I can draw this reasonably realistically as a three-dimensional object. So I'm going to draw this and then I'm going to stress which edges are parallel to each other. All right, here we are. Okay, let me change color. So consider these four edges of the object are all parallel to each other in exactly the same way that in our simple parallelogram, these opposing edges were parallel. And then these four edges are all parallel to one another again in our 3D shape, just as these two edges are parallel. And then we have another set. These four edges here in yellow are also going to be parallel to one another. That object is a particular three-dimensional solid. It's clearly a generalization of the uh, of the box in that we're allowing ourselves to um, have slanting edges if we want to. Now, let's introduce three vectors, A, B, and C, to represent these three kinds of edges. You see that all the green edges are the same vector A and so on. What happens if we do A dot B cross C? That, it turns out, the magnitude of that if we drop the sign then the magnitude is just the volume of this shape so it contains uh, uh, of course the simple case of a rectangular box as a special case but this will work for any parallel parallelepiped uh, that we care to think of although three vectors can always be combined with the scalar triple product to give us the volume and that's the end of the video